and orchestrating a state dinner for the world leaders can be quite a challenge. Let's find out more about what goes into the planning such events from Laura Schwartz. She joins us now from Chicago. Laura is the author of the book, Eat, Drink and Succeed. She's the uh, former White House director of events during the Clinton administration, and she's planned over a thousand events for the White House. Um, so Laura, that's, that's quite an undertaking. Um, I was talking to the folks at Sunnylands, and they were telling me, you know, how many months in advance it takes You've got to deal with the Chinese, you've got to deal with the State Department, you've got to deal with the White House. It just seems like there's so much to deal with. I imagine the day after, you're probably doing a lot of, phew, it's over. But, but give me an idea of what goes into orchestrating an event like this, because nothing can go wrong, right? I mean, it has to be perfect. It, it no, and if anything does go wrong, nobody can say. That is the secret, Mike. Tian Wei, it's so great to be here with both of you. Thank you. You know, a state dinner is a magical affair. It really is the highest honor you can give a visiting foreign diplomat, a head of state. It can either be designated as an official dinner or a working lunch or a state dinner, and that's what we're experiencing tonight at the White House. It starts about six months previous to anyone even stepping into the White House itself. You know, the invitation is issued, and they, they decide side with the State Department, the National Security Council, and the White House, what countries should be invited and when. And then they issue that invitation. And once it's accepted by the country, in this case, the wonderful People's Republic of China, then the planning begins. You want to talk about invitations. Who should we invite so that it advances the influence of the visiting country as well as our homeland? And then you try to think of what kind of food does this visiting head of state like? What kind of entertainment pleases him or her the most? And then you start building the event from there. And as long as you've got a solid plan and you plan and you plan you've got backup after backup when that first guest walks through the door my goal as the director of events was to at that point just manage because you've got your plans to fall back on it's just like any dinner party at your own home very interesting is this leisure or business how much business really can be discussed and achieved at state dinner they say dinner always makes miracle is that really true Absolutely, Tianwei. In fact, that's why my book is called Eat, Drink, and Succeed, because, yes, there are some that'll go tonight, and they'll, they'll drink the fabulous wine and eat the fabulous food and, and you know, take a bunch of pictures and, and talk with everybody. But then others who come who really want to turn ideas into reality and meet someone new and take that relationship and make it into a partnership. It's funny, on the guest list tonight is the head of animation from DreamWorks, Jeffrey Katzenberg. Well, it was in 94 at the first state dinner Bill Clinton ever held, which was for President Boris Yeltsin of Russia, that Jeffrey Katzenberg, Steven Spielberg, and David Geffen all came together after dinner and laid the plans for DreamWorks, which was announced 13 days after that state dinner. So who knows what's going to come out of tonight. It's both enjoyable and productive. Well, we know that he's sitting at the uh, top table tonight along with Tim Cook from Apple and Mark Zuckerberg mm -hmm. from Facebook. So who knows what's going to come out of all of that. But, but, exactly. but can you see uh, the demeanor change where obviously, you know, it, it, when you think about these state events, uh, President Xi, President Obama, a lot of tough talk with one another, having to kind of wrestle with some major issues. Do you just see kind of like suddenly a sigh and they kind of relax a little bit more? I mean, talk to me about how demeanors change with these world leaders. Well, Mike, I really liked your piece about that shirt sleeve diplomacy out in Sunnyland of Rancho Mirage. State dinners are very much the same way. When you can sit and break bread with someone at a table, it creates this next step of your relationship. And I think for all diplomatic efforts, just as they are in the corporate world and political world and nonprofit alike, to have a relationship with someone, that's going to solidify the partnership. And after the end of a day, which starts with a very illustrious state arrival ceremony with military honors, press conferences, bilateral talks, a lot of heady things, and especially with this uh, state visit, of course. But tonight is a night to celebrate the things we have in common and the things that have come out of today that will take our relationship as countries to the next level and benefit both those in the people's republic of china and the united states of america well laura we're going to leave it there thanks so much for your observations from chicago you've been there you know what it's like so i'm sure the person who has your role tonight is probably going to sleep a lot better tonight now that everything's done thank yeah, you Yeah, probably around one o'clock this morning <laughs> have a right. good evening thank you